Okay, so question five. They give us a whole proof. I'll read it and answer the questions. Let's just jump straight to the questions. I'm going to all throw light on what the proof actually says. 5.1. Explain the claim in line C that we can find vectors vi such that u vi equals ti. So C says we can find vectors uh, vi such that we can find vectors vi such that u vi equals ti. Um, so explain, they want to say, well, how, how can we can do that? What do we know about the vectors vi, the vectors ti, and the, the linear transformation u? Okay, so vi, oh, those, those are just found in C. Ti, ti is a basis for the null space of t. And u? Mm. U is a linear transformation from B to V, and U is onto, i.e. every Y in V can be written as Y equals UX for some X in V. Okay, I think that's the essential bit. So, every Y in V, every Y in V can be written as UX for some X in V. So for every so for every ti, we can write ti equals uvi. So the answer is then yes, u is onto. Okay, so uh, we could say what? So five point one, we'd say u onto. So every ti and ti is in v, right? Yes. This is the null space of t and t goes from b to v. Every ti in vi can be written as ti equals u vi or some vi in v, yes. Okay, let's just put that down, that's 5.1. U onto, so every ti in v can be written as ti equals u vi for some vi in v. Okay. 5.2. In line D, why is it that basis vectors must be non-zero? Oh, well, that's just going to be because, you, you know, you can't have a zero basis vector because the basis is, is, is independent. And then it says, and why is u of ui equal to zero? Okay, so line D, there is no over line D says, there is no overlap between the sets, the set with U's and the set with V's, since basis vectors must be non-zero, and U of U I equals zero. Okay, so basis vectors are non-zero because because they're independent. Okay, and zero is dependent. Why is U of U I equal to zero? What do you know about U? What do you know about U I? Um, ui. Ui is here. It's from the basis for the null space of u. Okay, so ui is in the null space of u, so u of ui equals zero. Okay. So, 5.2. Um, so, zero vector, so the first thing I asked is why, is, why are the basis vectors non zero? Um, so, it's because a basis is linearly independent. It's li. So, Oh, but any you know any set containing the zero vector, so the zero vector, let's say zero, is linearly dependent. Okay, um, and then oh, the, the was I think the thing is that the things in the null space, uh, ui is in the null space. Ui is in the null space of u. So u of ui equals the zero vector. Okay, so we've got a 5.3 now. 
what still needs to be done to show that u1 to up, v1 to vq is a basis for the null space of tu. In other words, what part of the explanation has been left out between slide e and f? Okay. We will show that x equals u1 to blah, 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 is a show that, that oh, show that x equals that. What, we, we will show that x is a basis for the null space of tu. Da, 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 da. Uh, something left out. Da, da, da. Okay, well, show it's a basis. You're gonna have to show that it's. You're gonna have to show that x is l i, and independent, and that it spans the null space of tu. So that's gonna have to be shown. Has that been shown already? Maybe. Um, we haven't even, no, this set has not even been mentioned before. We've just constructed the set. So those are the two things that need to be shown. Okay. So the things that need to be shown are that x is linearly independent and that the span of, oops, that the span of x equals the null space of tu. Okay. 5.4. What statement, fact, or theorem is explained by this argument? So now we've answered these questions, you've got a bit of familiarity, hopefully, with the argument, and so now it's, it's we're more able to read the whole thing and figure out what actually this is trying to prove. So it starts off, it starts off with a vector space, linear transformations u and t, with u being onto. So we have this vector space, and these transformations, these two transformations, uh, let's try this. We have this vector space, the transformation u, this transformation t, um, u is onto, and then that's how we start off with. Then we do some stuff, and we end up saying that the dimension of the null space, the dimension, you end up saying, uh, saying that the, the dimension of the null space of t u is p plus q. What's p, what's q? Here's, here's where p appears. Here's where q first appears. P, p is a dimension of... P is a dimension of... What? The null space of u, yes. Because that's from the basis for the null space of u. And q is the dimension of what? Q is the dimension of the null space probably of t. Let's just check that. Yes, okay. So it says that when u is onto, in this situation, the null, dimension of the null space of tu is a sum of the dimensions of those other null spaces. The situation is when u is onto and, yeah, okay. So, what, that's a factual theorem that's, that's explained. So that the dimension of the null space of tu equals the dimension of the null space of u Oh, wrong, put this way around. Dimension of the null space of t plus the dimension of the null space of u if when uh, when u linear from b to v is onto So onto and linear, and t from v to v is also not does that have to be onto? Was u that has to be onto? Say onto. Sorry, when u is from v to v is linear, and onto and t from v to v is just some other. It's just a linear map. Okay, that's what the theorem says, right? That's what this thing proves, rather. Okay. That's it.